Hello and welcome back once again to Infinite Jeff. The project where I, Jeffrey, read the book Infinite Jess. Do you want <coughs> page at a time, one day at a time? This is page number 390. Here we go. Are not always the point. Sometimes suffering's point is almost crying out in a high-pitched whine to be heard. As fitness gurus go, Lyle is results-oriented in can-do. Footnote 153. Ten-year-old Kent Blot whose parents are Seventh-day Adventists, isn't yet old enough to masturbate. But he hears quite a lot about it, not surprisingly, from his adolescent peers, in rather lush detail, masturbation, and is worried about what sorts of homemade-type, potentially wicked and soul-sapping pornographic cartridges will ruin through run through his psychic projector as he masturbates when he eventually can masturbate and worries about whether different sorts of fantasy scenes and combinations herald different sorts of psychic dysfunction or turpitude, and wants to get a good jump on worrying about it. The sounds of the dining hall's gala are more frequent and convulsive without the sound of rain. Lyle tells Blot not to let the weight he would pull, him, uh, pull to himself exceed his own personal weight. Up to the left, the storm's clouds' stragglers run like ink in water, between the window and the risen moon. Mario Incandenza's presidential puppet is just about to inaugurate subsidized time. 16B's Anton Duchette, Anton Duchette's, Duchette's been driven to Lyle, he says, by an increasingly self-consciousness about the big, round, dark, raised mole on his upper, upper lip, just under his left nostril. It's only a mole, but looks pretty dire, nasally. People who first meet him are always pulling him off to the side and handing him a Kleenex. Duchette lately wishes either the mole were gone or he were gone. Even if people don't stare at the mole, it's like they're intentionally not staring at it. Duchette pounds himself in the chest and thigh, supposedly in frustration. He just cannot come to terms with how it must look. It's getting worse as puberty intensifies the anxiety. Then, in a vicious cycle, the anxiety prompts the nervous tick on his face's right side. He's starting to suspect that some upperclassmen are referring to him behind his back as Anton Booger Duchette. It's like he's frozen on this anxiety, unable to move on to a more advanced, onto more advanced anxieties. He can't see any way past this. The pounding is more a sign of intense unconscious self-hatred, though, Lyle knows. Duchette grimaces and says he's starting to want to play tennis with his hand over his nose and upper lip. But he has a two-handed backhand and it's too late to switch and there's no way they're going to let him switch to just one hand for just for aesthetic reasons. <laughs> Lyle sends Anton du Duchette packing off with directions to come back with Mario Incandenza the minute the I-Day gala lets out. Mario gets a fair number of aesthetic self-conscious referrals from Lyle. No type or rank of guru is above delegating. It's like a law. Duchette says it's like he's stuck. It's becoming all he thinks about. This is on his way out. His back's additional moles form no outline or shape. Lyle pops the tab to a CFDC Mario tends to bring down most evenings around supper time. In between door dickings and visits, Lyle does little isometric neck stretches for the tension. Uh, okay, that was uh, page number 390 of Infinite Jeff. Have a good night.